Hello Destiny Kids, how are you? It is Josh here. Um, I just want to say first of all, I miss every single one of you so very much. Uh, I miss seeing your smiles when I walk into church and uh, I, I really hope that you are all doing well. I really hope that you guys are looking after your parents, after your siblings. Um, let's just give it a few, a, a little while longer and I will see you again. Um, before we get started with our message for today, I just wanted to quickly pray for you. Is that okay? Awesome. All right. So if you just close your eyes with me as we get into prayer, I will pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this time that you've blessed us with. And we want to thank you for this time of communion. Although it's not face to face, it is, uh, it is still face to face. And we just want to thank you that your love knows no borders. And I just want to pray for every little heart that is open to hear and receive this word, that you may bless them and bless their families, Almighty God. I pray this in the Almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okie dokie. So today what I'm going to talk about is uh, the story or the parable of the Good Samaritan. Now, a parable, really, really easy to remember. So the next time someone asks you, you're going to be able, hmm, I remember. Josh told me about that. So a parable is just another way of saying a story. And now parables were important in the time of Jesus. Is, well, well, the reason why it was important is because that was how Jesus uh, would teach his followers. He would tell stories and um, stories are just easier to understand. Putting things into, into the way that we understand them from our day to day lives makes it so much easier to understand and uh, for us to be able to do as well. So now. Before I get started, I want you to pause this video and ask someone around you what you think the story of the Good Samaritan means. So now, pause this and I'll be back in a jiffy. The Miracle of Mercy, the Good Samaritan. This is Jesus. <laughs> who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. You see, when Jesus was on earth, he wanted everyone to know what God thought about things. So he took every opportunity to teach people about God's heart. <clears throat> One day, a religious expert stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? <laughs> what does the law say? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> right. All right. Do this and you will live. Wait. The man then asked, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. Ah! They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. <laughs> by chance, a priest came along. <laughs> but when he saw the man lying there, ah, yuck. he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. La 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la, whoa! Another man who worked in the temple who was called a Levite walked over and looked at him lying there. He's out. Uh, huh? But he also passed by on the other side. Then a Samaritan came along. Uh. Yeah. Samaritans were hated by Jews. They were seen as lesser people and Jews would not interact with them. But when the Samaritan saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. One room, please. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here.
Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Okay, I'm back. Um, so now, what, what, what did you guys talk about? I really do hope that you did mention something about kindness or something about um, not leaving anyone behind or, or something of that nature. All right, so you can find this story of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10 uh, from verse 25 all the way to 37. I'm going to start talking from verse 30. I'm just going to set the scene. So now there was this lawyer who goes and talk, tells Jesus and he says, Jesus, now, what is one of the greatest commandments that you can actually, you know, you can say, I know you've given us don't kill, don't steal. But what do you think is one of the one of the greater commandments? And now Jesus goes on to explain how uh, loving and in particular, loving your neighbor is one of the greatest commandments that you can ever do. It's really hard to love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, but Jesus perfectly describes this through this story of the of the Samaritan. So now, the lawyer then was a bit confused and said, well then, who was my neighbour? It's a funny question, right? But it's also a very important question because your neighbour isn't just the person who lives next door to you or the person that's sitting next to you, but your neighbour is anyone who is close to you. In whatever, wherever you are, anyone who is close to you, anyone that you talk to is considered as a neighbour. So now, Jesus goes on and he tells the story about how this man one day decided to pack his bags and he wanted to go on a trip. He went all the way from Jerusalem to Jericho and halfway on, along his trip, he bumped into some really bad guys. Like I'm talking seriously bad guys. Like these guys saw this man who was just minding his own business and they punched him and he beat him and they kicked him to the point where he was really, really, really injured. And they pretty much just left him on the side of the road with no hope of living and just left him there. And now this poor man just sitting there by himself in lots of pain with no one to help him sees a priest walking towards him. And now what do you think this priest did? Well, I'm sure you would have thought that this priest would have stopped and helped this, uh, this young man, but they just walked past him. They just left him. And I'm sure this, this, this man who was beaten was feeling really, really bad and really sad. And again, thinking that he's got no hope. But then he sees another person, this time a Levite, walking towards him. And he's like, yes, finally, maybe someone's going to help me. But again, the Levite just walked straight past him. But now, in this time, uh, the Samaritans were actually considered as the enemies to those who lived in Jerusalem and it's you know what happens when you see an enemy that's when you would think that they would just leave them but no this Samaritan saw this man and thought there's no way I'm gonna leave this poor man on the side of the road so what did he do the Samaritan went and picked up this man put him on his donkey and they went for a trip they went for a trip to the closest place that he could find where he could be able to provide this guy with some shelter, with something to eat, and a way to look after him. So this Samaritan, an enemy of the people that lived in Jerusalem at the time, the person who you'd least expect to help, helped in a time where this man was about to die. And I think that the message behind this is very, very important. Number one, it shows you exactly what being a follower of Jesus is about. No matter who you who it is, you should always be willing to give a helping hand, even if it's someone who may not always be nice to you. Because you have Jesus in your heart, you will find it so easy to go and help them out. Even if they've said really bad words to you, you know what? You've got Jesus in your heart, so you can still go and help them out. That is what being a follower of Christ is about. And it's about loving your neighbor the same way that you love yourself. Now, Onto the story again. These guys uh, stayed at this place, um, it's kind of like a hotel. Let's think about it like a hotel. So they went to a hotel. The Samaritan fed the man, um, cleaned up his wounds, made sure that he was okay. And in the morning, when they both woke up, 
uh, the, the man who was beaten was still a little bit unwell. So the Samaritan had to continue on with his journey. And he went to the, to the, to the front uh, where, where sort of the hotel keeper was and gave him some money and said, hey, look, I have this man who was brutally beaten and was almost dying. Can you please look after him? Here's some money to take care of him. Um, and if there's anything that you spend over this amount, I'll be back and I will repay that amount. And I think, again, that is just the most beautiful thing ever. Uh, Jesus, once he finished telling the story, he says to, to this lawyer who was trying to prove a point, uh, he said to him that you should go out and do likewise. So that means you should go and do the same. And no matter where you go, when you go to school, um, always remember to be kind and always remember that you have Jesus in your heart. So even if someone's done something bad to you, you can always do something good to them. And that shows them exactly uh, who we are and what we stand for. Okay. So uh, my activity for this week may not be something that you can physically do, but it's something that I would like you to do for the next seven days up until next Sunday. And hopefully that after the seven days, you'll continue to do it because it is just something nice to do. For someone important around your life, it doesn't matter who it is, may you be your mum, your dad, your sister or your brother, um, even your aunt or your uncle. I would just like to you I would like to ask that you do something special for one of those persons people every day. So for example, me and my sister are always arguing and sometimes it feels uh it feels bad after we argue. But um you know what, if I know that she's had a bad day I'll go buy her some ice cream just because it's a nice thing. You may not need to buy something for them, but it could be something as nice as uh, doing a, your bed, doing your sister or brother's bed in the morning. Something nice, but something that would mean a lot to them. And that's all I would ask for you for this week's activity. Okay, so now uh, I would like to give you a big virtual hug because I still do miss you. And I would like you to talk about it with your parents, talk about what you think you have um, got from this little message and how you're going to try and do something nice for someone every day. And I hope that continues on for the rest of your life. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pray for you again and then I'll let you go. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for the blessing you put upon my life to speak into the live, lives of these children. I just pray that they may all grow up to be mighty men and mighty women of God and that they may shine your light to the world because that's what you ask and that is your will. Lord, I just want to thank you for the word that we have learnt about, about the Good Samaritan and that uh, even though in the face of the world they were meant to be enemies uh, because he had, he had something in his heart and I believe that he had Jesus in his heart, uh, that he was able to help his enemy out and do it easily. Lord, I pray that this lesson is learned amongst all of these children and all of the parents and all of their, their extended family, Almighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. You guys take care. I will see you so very soon. Uh, lots of love and lots of kisses. Bye.